Want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished reading Makunwele Rumble. This is the third book in the Jekua series by Travis Riddle. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing the book, which was just right now. So, ah, this is hard. I'm pretty disappointed by this book. I'm going to give it a two out of five, which means I did not like it. Um, didn't hate it. I finished it, but I, I didn't really like much of my experience at all. And I'm, I feel really bad about this because for a number of reasons. One, I was really optimistic that I would, I would lo really like this book because I feel like I'm the only booktuber that's talking about this book. It's not very highly reviewed. Um, the, the ratings are high, uh, but you often find that in books that don't have a lot of, reading, uh, of ratings. The more ratings you get, often you pull that score down, unless you're like Brandon Sanderson or something, which Travis Riddle is not. Um, I heard about the series a long time ago um, off of a, Reddit, a random Reddit thread, and it seemed intriguing to me. It, it promised to be this Pokemon-inspired, low-stakes fantasy story, and that's what I got for the first two books, and I enjoyed it immensely. I think I gave the first one a four and a half out of five. I gave the second a four out of five. And I've liked to use these books um, to split up some of the denser, uh, really like more heavy fantasy books that I typically like to read. Um, and I feel uh, also bad, um, not only because this author is not very big, and I hate to say negative things, um, especially for the smaller authors that this may impact in a negative way, um, because uh, Travis Riddle is the only author that I've actually interviewed before. Um, and I really, really want to say nice things about this, but I also, um, more compelling than that, is that I, I always like to be honest with uh, all my videos. Um, so here's what's up with this book. And I feel like most of the people that are watching this are, are not familiar with this series, but what you have here is Pokemon inspired. It's just like Pokemon, but some, some key differences. One is, is the Pokemon don't actually fight each other. So the way that you catch uh, these Jekua, that's, you know, that's Pokemon in this book, is that you have to use this little like um, technology to get really close to them quietly, use like bait, do whatever you need to do to get up close to these things and take like their DNA on like this little, like this yellow magical stuff comes out and it captures what they are and it saves their data on like your watch or whatever and use different data cards. And so when you're fighting, they come out and they fight. So it, there's no like animal abuse. And if you really think about Pokemon, it's it's straight up like animal abuse, the show and book or whatever in game. But in this, it, it solves that problem and, and it makes it very fun. I, I like that aspect of this book. You have to have mana to keep them, keep them functioning. It's fun. They're short, they're sweet, they're to the point and they tell this really small adventure. But in this book, the length like doubled and I was critical of the first couple books because I didn't feel like they were long enough, but I think I was wrong or the author just didn't do what I wanted him to do here because the book is, is quite a bit longer. It's, it's the size of like a normal fantasy book. And, but the problem is, is that he didn't tell this grander story. He filled up a lot, like the second half of this book, not like sequentially, but like it mixed up with this like love plot and it wasn't very well done. Um, and maybe it was, maybe I just don't rec recognize a good love plot when it's in front of me, but I didn't feel like it was great and it, it distracted on what I wanted out of the story. In this story, the characters are at a tournament. Um, the big tournament that they've been trying to get to is they're finally there and they're gonna fight and see how they do. And you don't expect that they're going to do very well and they certainly cannot win it because they've only been working at this craft for an extremely short amount of time and everyone else is experts. So it ruined a lot of the tension when you already know that they're not gonna be successful. It felt like this book should have come much later in the series when there actually is some tension there. And because you knew that eventually you'd be disappointed as the reader and that it just, it was like, why did we go through this experience? And you know, it was just fight after fight after fight. And what I realized what I like most about the series is the thrill of the adventure. Going out and hunting for these things learning some lessons along the way and having a really like kind of tight isolated adventure but these battles you know there were only a few of them involving the main character of this book there was many others described in detail of characters that have been newly 
uh, brought to this series, and it felt like I didn't care about the outcome of that. So I read most of this book was you know battle sequences that I didn't care about, or a love story that I didn't care about, and so that was frustrating. Uh, it's not what I wanted, and maybe. You know, I suspect that most people that read this, that is what they want. And when I read some of the reviews for this, there aren't many out there because it just came out. And I suspect that most of them are going to love it. And that that's the thing that they love about it. And they're going to love the character work and they're going to love all these things that just didn't work for me at all. So I'm, I'm very much hoping that the next book will go back to that shorter format, that we'll get these more, you know, exploration stories and fun. But but I am worried that it's now going in this other direction, that we're going to be going down these love plots, that the greater story here is not about becoming a master at the craft and, you know, trying to catch them all. It's going to be about, you know, to use the analogy, it's about the, the Team Rocket, which exists here. It's not Team Rocket, it's something else. And that that's the focus. That's the real part of the story. But that's not what I'm into. And so just so many weird directions here that I didn't enjoy. Um, there were some weird writing choices in this too that were unfortunate. And one of them I'll say is that there is a non-binary non character in this story, which is on its own totally fine, I don't care. But uh, the author decided to, to say they a lot, they and them, to refer to this character, which again is fine. You know, have your pronouns, do what you need to do. Uh, you know, be yourself. And, but it's in literary form, it's really frustrating when this character is spending time with other people because it's using they and them. And even in the same sentence, referring to this character and a group of people to the point where it becomes very confusing. It's like either just call that character by their name or instead of just saying they to refer to a group of people, say like, the group or they both or something. But I swear, literally dozens of times, I truly had no idea who was being talked about. And, and that's just a, it's a weird choice to make where, you know, you can easily, easily write this character with these pronouns in a way that makes sense. And it just wasn't done here. And so that was very, just very often, I found myself just scratching my head on like, wait, who just went to that location? Like, who just got hit? Like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't think anybody knows what's going on. You just have to, you know, roll the dice and see what comes up and maybe read later and maybe you'll figure it out because it certainly wasn't evident when you're reading it. But, so I'm hoping that we get back to the greatness of this series and that I can go back on the hype train. I most certainly will be reading it. I don't know, based on the review that I gave that I'm gonna get an advanced copy of it anymore, I hope that I am, uh, but maybe I'm not. But if I don't, I'll buy it and I'll review it afterwards And because I am looking forward to it. And I, I, I hope that you all give the series a chance. Um, it's not for everybody. The writing's not amazing, but it is fun. If you're looking for that low stakes, fun kind of story, I've kind of said it's like this blend of like Legends and Lattes type of atmosphere of low stakes with some mild tension in it, but just kind of nice and cozy. Um, with a Pokemon story. And if both of those things appeal to you, you're gonna love this series. Um, if one or both of those don't appeal to you, uh, there's a chance that you probably won't. So take it for what it's worth, but I do think the series is criminally underrated, uh, even with this last installment, and that more people need to give it a chance. Um, so uh, that's my review, I'm sticking to it. Thanks so much for uh, giving me your time, and as always, happy reading to you. Thank you so much to my patrons, with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier patrons, Anna, Ben, CJ, Danu, Darren, Jamie, Michael Sugarman, my book is lit, Romeo Mike, Ron Reich, Russell, and Skye.